Yes, yeah. Sir. All right, we're back for another episode of the Idiot Circle, back to back nights. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while you have a minute, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you click on the bell icon, you'll get notified of any uh, new episodes we post. Uh, make sure to comment on the on the episodes. We need some uh, feedback. You know, good or bad or ugly, we don't care. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. You know, give us some kind of input. That's what we're looking for. So, I'm Mike. I'm Fred. I'm Rob. Fred, why don't you introduce our special guest today? He's special, all right. <laughs> so, special Ed, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have we have the former South Lake High School football coach, St. Clair football coach, and current coach at Marine City on the staff with Darren Letson and my best man of my wedding. I'm Mr. sorry. Bill Nesbitt. Wasn't Billy that Boy. Timmy McConnell? Billy Boy. Wasn't Billy Boy, Timmy Billy Boy. Good to see you, brother. Hey, thanks for having, on, having me on there. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure I've ever called been best man of anything before, including my own house. And I'm the only man here. So uh, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> That is hilarious. So, so what you were saying is I'm the only one on this panel that can make boys? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Well, there you go. So, Billy Boy, why don't you, uh, why don't you uh, fill us in, you know, as a, uh, as I, you know, we want to know what you've been up to. I mean, we want to know what you, where you went to school, what, you know, what you did and kind of lead up to what you're currently doing um, just so, so people get to know you a little bit uh, better. Sure, you're talking uh, went, to, went to school as in high school or you're talking all, college? All the way, all the way, through. all the way through. If you all want right. to talk about elementary school, feel free. Preschool, <laughs> whatever. Shut up. Well, I did two weeks of kindergarten in Bay City prior okay. to moving to St. Clair. Um, but I went to I went I went to St. Clair High School. You know, I was a, come from a, a military family, so we were all over the country. All my I got five older sisters, and younger brothers, so we were all over the country when we were young. But we finally settled in St. Clair when I was when I was five, um, and then uh, I went to Eastern Michigan after after high school. I was I was actually de debating between uh, University of Detroit and Eastern, but uh, yeah, and I, I thought you might appreciate that U of D was, yep. um, you know, pretty strong in architecture. I wasn't sure if I was going into architecture or into education, and so uh, U, U of D gave me a little bit of money to go there. For architecture, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And Eastern was the only school in the state that offered both physical education and architecture. So that's why I decided to go there and uh, um, eventually made the decision. In fact, when uh, what helped me make the decision when I went back and coached a little bit while I was still at, at Eastern, I went back and helped uh, Ken Thole when he took over the program at St. Clair. And, um, and so uh, didn't, I realized, didn't, you, right, hey, I didn't you and I coach, coach with Pete Fox? We coached. We coached with. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure. Or was it Mark were, Eberhard? It, it was Mark. We coached together with uh, I, I, with Steve. Oh right? yeah. When he first yeah. when he first took over. Uh, that was yeah. that was a few years later. Yeah. Um, it was 1990 when I coached there with, with Pete Fox. Yeah, and that's where I, I was with you. Yeah. It, it was the three of us. And we I remember being in the film room with you. Yeah. And, uh, and when, yeah, you were hilarious. So and that's where we you know we started getting you know. You know, going out and getting to know each other a little bit. That was that was cool. Yeah, I started to build a little relationship, which is kind of cool back then. Because I my only recollection of you from younger when it was was when I was in in high school playing football and your dad was our defensive coordinator. And every once in a while you'd make a guest appearance at our practices, probably when your practices weren't weren't at the same time and you'd show up at one of our practices on a just kind of throw the football around a little bit. So it was neat yeah. to, to get a chance to get to know you at that point. Right. So yeah, after after college and I got uh, I got hired in the in the district here in uh, in East China. Um, started at St. Clair, like you said, like we said before, working with uh, Steve Mott. And then um, when I got hired, uh, teaching ELA, because that was my minor, was at English Language and Literature. So I was teaching ELA, and then a, a job opened up over Marine City. And um, I actually talked to uh, – Bill McCulloch actually gave me kind of the heads up about it. It was during track season. I was helping with track, and he was telling me about Bob, and they needed him. Um, they, were, they were looking for a phys ed, health. English teacher combination, which is all three things that I was certified. And I was certainly looking to, you know, I knew enough about Bob and the program he's already building. So that's a great chance to learn, learn from, from a guy that knew what the heck he was doing. And boy, boy, did he. And so I went there and then, yeah, as you mentioned, I, 
Um, I went on to uh, South Lake High School for one year as the head coach, and then the job uh, in St. Clair opened up, so I came back uh, and was there for, uh, for, I believe, 12 years. And now I'm back at, at Marine City coaching offensive line. It's, but it's all, all, all situations have been great experiences, just been great. I feel like we're not addressing the like the pink elephant in the room, Mike. I mean, <laughs> okay, here you we know, go. we're talking to Bill, and he's got a great resume, Bill. I think you're a passionate guy. But what do you think you're most known for? What am I most known for? Yeah. But like, just for the regular day, regular people in the community that may attend a football game at Marine City here and there, what do you think you're most known for? Well, I, I think, as you said, I think I'm, I'm – Somewhat known for, for, for my passion and my energy. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes. I would agree with that. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and I hope integrity. I think I think people know I'm doing things for the right reasons. So I'm hoping that those those, are those things. Hmm. So that is not the right answer, Bill. <laughs> That's not the right answer. I, we, we agree. We agree. Give agreed. me the answer. I don't know what answer. <laughs> Ready, guys? Stupidity. Two, three. You're shorts. wearing shorts <laughs> all year long. All year long. Yeah, that's now, quite like a few years ago. I'm king with the hair. Is it like the you know the hoodie for uh, Belichick? I mean, what is it? Get, get, let's get real. I want to find out what this is all about. All right, all right, that's a reasonable question. <laughs> probably one that inquiring minds do want to know. You know, it started at the very, very beginning of my career, and I guess there was a few different reasons I decided to do that. Number one is because when it starts to get kind of crappy out, the kids are still, they're still in their uniforms. And my thought was, you know, they can't come to me and complain about how cold it is when I'm standing there in shorts. So part of it was me getting on on kind of an even playing field with them. Yeah. And uh, and part of it is, uh, um, you know, I learned this quite a while ago too. It helps me get focused. Because if I'm out in the, in, in, the, in the elements and I'm thinking, man, it's cold, that's my reminder that you better tough it up and quit worrying about yourself and start thinking about the team. And it gets my mind focused back on what I'm supposed to be doing. So it really, uh, it, it helps helps in a, in a weird way. So it's like in Bull Durham when, what's his name, the catcher told the pitcher to wear the garters to focus more on his brain. That's what you're saying? This helps you get into the game and focus? <laughs> Well, I won't tell you what I'm wearing under the shorts. Let's not go there. <laughs> just remember the just remember the the flower. If goes anything the, at all, the flower goes in the front, big guy. <laughs> the flower goes in the front. Well, Mike and I would sit in the stands and we'd watch you, and we think, you know, we're thinking this guy's a nut, right? He has got to be a nut. Got to be a hell of a guy to party with, though, right? He's got his <laughs> all the things. So I wanted to find out a little bit more. So I called some coaches around to see if any other coaches do this type of thing. And I wanted to really dig in to find out what's going on in the Bill Nesbitt mind in there. And usually so nothing. The first, coach I called was, <laughs> <laughs> the first coach I called was a guy, a friend of yours, a longtime friend, Coach Ron. Yeah, and I saw he, I saw your show a little while back, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Great guy and uh, good personality. And so when I talked to Ron, I said, Ron, What's this guy's deal? And he goes, Rob, I can't figure it out either. He goes, because his calves aren't that great. My calves are better. (laughs) He said he thought he should be just wearing the shorts and then you would be wearing pants. That was Ron's Ron's, uh, answer. And I thought, you know, that's still, Mike, that wasn't enough, not enough data points to get to the heart of this. So I reached out to Brian Kelly. You know who Brian Kelly is? Yep. Yep, yep. He's a former at Notre Dame coach and current coach at LSU. How could yeah. you understand him with that Cajun accent? I don't get it. But Yeah, right, with the Cajun yeah. accent. <laughs> and I thought, wow, this is my chance to really get into Bill Nesbitt's mind and understand why he does this. So call up Coach Kelly. I get a verbal g- agreement to commit from him, and then we get a contractual agreement to do an interview. So we get – to the site we sit down together face to face he's looking me right in the eye he stands up turns around walks away and just leaves me hanging i don't know i couldn't figure it out so i was like <laughs> still not enough data points so i gotta i gotta dig i gotta find another coach so i thought who better than jim harbaugh yeah. so the current coach at the university of michigan you know it's ironic the czar knows jim harbaugh most people don't know that so i call up jim and i said listen Jim, 
I need to come and meet with you. I got some game film and tape. I got to show you this coach at Marine City. So we get down into the game film. I start or the room. I start showing the, the, all the film. We start looking at it. He looks at you and he starts shaking his head. And I said, Jim, what is it? And he said, uh, he said, I can't believe a football coach could have the opportunity, a great opportunity to showcase a great pair of khaki pants. And he's only wearing shorts. <laughs> Not even wearing khaki shorts. <laughs> yeah. They used to be khaki shorts. On, on, in oh, they did? Oh, well, he was. Oh, wow. Well, he did, he did two things. He he said he gave me his personal shopper's number at JCPenney to call. You could call and get a pair of pants and said, make sure you get the pleated ones down the front. That's well, what he said. I just need the bottom half. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, he wants you with the full pants. He wants your full pants. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. You knew it was going to happen. Here we go. Let's see what it is. What do you got on? No, no. no. Well, first of all, I'm not a, adverse to it. The problem is, I'm just too cheap to buy anything more than that. Shorts because wow. of less, less material or less, you know, cost less. That's true. He went to the he went to the school of Kevin Mann. How to save? I money. also called yeah. Coach Ryan Day over at Ohio State, and when I showed him the clips and the film, it, it got really weird. He he. He wanted to know if you were single and asked for your phone number. So <laughs> yeah. if, if, he shows up, if, if he has a re surprise recruiting visit at Marine City, I would suggest you stay away from him. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't tell him my name was, was Benjamin Over, did you? Oh, Benjamin yeah. Over? Yeah. Not ben Benjamin Over. Dover, is it? <laughs> Benjamin <laughs> ben Dover. <laughs> it definitely wasn't Phil McCracken. <laughs> well, I, I, have, I have to say, it's nice to know that you're actually thinking something in relation to the shorts because you're out there in the fucking dead of winter. I'm thinking there's nothing going through this guy's head at this point. <laughs> I mean, we're up there freezing our ass off, and I have a lot of natural insulation. I don't know how you do it, man. I just I don't. got a lot of fur too, though. I got a lot of fur on those those skinny calves. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. You look like a guy that could get out there and still play, though, Bill. Do you ever get out there and mix it up with the guys? I mean, not obviously hit, but, I mean, just get in there and, and run. And Well, fortunately, I work with offensive linemen. So, so you know, as far as me running routes, it's kind of, you know, way past my prime. But I can get in there and, and, and we, we can punch and throw, you know, strike and, and do some yeah. demonstrations with them. And uh, sometimes they don't like it so much, but I do enjoy it. Well, okay. yeah, we used to, Bill and I used to play, uh, they had the JV would do, uh, have, have a couple guys just to cover the hole and we had the arm pads and we used to drill kids <laughs> coming and just take them off of their feet. And they're like, what the hell are you doing? Like, Hey, you got to prepare for that. Cause you think, you think I hit hard. Wait till you get the six foot three, two sixty guy, uh, coming across the middle and, and jacking your jaw. So relax. So I thought that's kind of funny. Well, but, it, 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 but in all seriousness, I mean, we, you do have to do that sometimes with kids because for one thing in today's game, which is different than when we played, when it was all shoulder blocking, et cetera, we're all using hands now because the rules changed and the preparation and understanding wild mechanics. So even a smaller guy can still deliver a, quite a quite a violent punch, but they, they, they do so much of just sticking their hands out almost in self-defense and don't learn really how to strike you know, violently. And so you have to do that sometimes for it and, and be able to explain to them, this is a 54 year old man. And, and you didn't like that so much. Now imagine you guys are doing to each other, you know, so they start to get the message that you can be violent with those hands, even if you're a little guy and, 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 and shock the opponent and slow down their charge and, and change their direction just by having some violence. I like how he's, he's, his favorite word is violence. That's one well, of my favorite words. <laughs> it's, it's a violent game. They, they try to change it. They turn it into flag football sometimes, but I, at its core, it's a violent game. Yeah, and that's, that's what we that's love about it. That's what Americans love, love about. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a that's the one good thing, Bill, that you brought up that the 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 game is won in the trenches. And what you have done with Tim Lolito, and I'm and the, and the guys on the opposite side of the ball on the defense have just done a wonder. I mean, a fantastic job with the kids and remember, I mean, you're talking about a school that en enrollment's dropping year by year by year, but yet you're that fine oiled machine that just, just keeps producing kids and kids buy into the, you know, the weight room and everything else like that. And next thing you know, you get somebody the size of Connor Mason, you know, that, that's, that's not a bad person to run behind. <laughs> 
No, no, and he's and he's he's got himself in, in pretty good shape now. He can move. Oh so God, that's gonna be scary. Oh move. my God, he's gonna yeah. kill people. He's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Well, talk a little bit about that, Bill. I mean, some we're always asking Fred, like, who are the players to watch for this year with Marine City, and maybe talk about some of the linemen that you know, if it's him or others that are just going to be spectacular, or maybe someone we don't even know about. It's going to surprise people this year. Well, you know, uh, you know, he mentioned Connor Mason, and yeah, I, a year ago we wouldn't have said that. You know, his first two years, he came up as a, as a freshman. Um, and for, for two years, he couldn't finish a practice. And that was no, no knock. He just he was not able to handle the, the physical rigors of it. Last year, he was able to. And so it, he stepped into, into a role and was able to perform. And, and so now, this year, he's, in just, he's not just in, in, in showing up to practice or at our camps able to, to just uh, perform. But he's performed at a high level already. So he's going he's gonna to be a, unquestionably a, 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 a known commodity this year. Um, another one I'm sure is a known commodity has got to be Zach Tetler, our, our, our halfback that's returning. Oh, yeah. um, it's amazing to me that he has not gotten at least Division II offers yet. You know, sometimes, you know, he because, he, A, he has the productivity. But, you know, I get it. Coaches at the other level, they want the measurables, whether it's speed, obviously in almost every position. Sometimes they want height. If you're a lineman, they want long arms. They want the height. But he, 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 at a fair state camp this summer, he ran a four f- on the, you know, the, the fat, the fully automated timing system, not the handheld, the full, fully automated time. He ran a four, four, one or four, four, three. Whoa. For a kid that also benches, you know, 275. And he also, you know, r- rushed for 1500 yards. So we're not talking a kid that, that was productive, but doesn't have the measurables, but he's at playing at a small school. We're not talking about a kid that has the measurables, is not, but not productive. This kid's tremendously productive. Yeah, has, has with the exception of height, he's got the measurable. So, uh, you you said he's strong, but he looks a little slight though too when we see him on the field. I don't know. Maybe is that me? Or is I'm, am I wrong about that? Or is he a little slight build? No, he's not slight. He, he's, he's not probably. You know, you said that two years ago when he was a sophomore. Yeah, but not now. He's uh, he's really put a lot of time in his legs as well. So no, he's uh. But, you know, sometimes that comes down to just the uniform and the height. You know, the, the black – at least my wife claims the black, you know, slenders makes you look slender, right? Isn't that why yeah. I have a little bit of dresses? So, Should uh, we wear uh, polka dots, Bill? Will that make us look bigger? <laughs> <laughs> <It's so laughs> we're we're going to get, you know, horizontal stripes so he looks a little bigger than <laughs> the scouts. <laughs> oh, boy. That's awesome. So, Bill uh, – you know, obviously, with your all the coaching experience you've had and the, and, and the people that you've worked with, um, name your name your top three influences as far as coaches are concerned that you know really uh, that you've you've listened to and and kind of adopted some of their traits, so to speak. Well, I'm sure. Well, I'm like anybody that's that's worked with them. You know, Bob Suskevich is, is obviously the greatest impact. I, on so many coaches and so many players and so many parents. And, you know, that's, that's uh, not just as a coach, but that's hopefully no matter what you're doing, you, if, if you can impact people the way he impacts people, that's, that's something. So I'd be a fool not to try to le- learn from him sure. from not only that, but, you know, it was early in my career. I wanted to learn from him. So learning from, you know, how to put a practice plan together and how to manage coaches and communicate with coaches and, and empower coaches and get them to, to uh, to want to work because you gave them an opportunity, you gave them some some uh, responsibility. So certainly Bob Suskevich is up on the list num- as, as as number one. And to say after that at three, I, I don't know who the other t- two would be, simply because there's there's so many that fall under like you know two A B C D E F G kind of. I mean, um, like I said with with Bob empowering us right away when I worked with uh, my first year at Marine City, I worked. JV with, with Larry Rombach, which I think everybody who's ever coached there since probably uh, 1942 has worked with Larry Right, <laughs> right. Um, and I mean that with the greatest love of my heart. He's a great guy. Right. Um, so I worked with him for one year, but still, the next year I, I, I went up and coached uh, with, with uh, the varsity on de- defensive line my first year. And uh, I'm on the headsets in the game one. Tony's already, uh, you know, let me make decisions on, on, as far as defensive sets and coverages and all that. So that really impacted me too. The way you, you have to trust the guy, you know, first you got to teach him, you got to make sure you make him hold him accountable. 
but but let them uh, let let coaches coach, and that that certainly impacted me and in, in the preparation and and someone like Ron who's who's uh, always thinking, always looking for something different, something new. Um, it tremendously organized. I mean, you get the guy coached volleyball at a high level when he and when he first started doing it, he didn't even know anything about volleyball by his own you know admission. He coached basketball at a high level, and baseball at a high level, so. The guy, uh, he can very, very passionate, but a, a true student of whatever he does. He'd go by his classroom when he was teaching and, and really, um, you know, was so engaged and engaging, but prepared. Um, never that dead, dead moment. So guys like that. And then Chad Miller that I worked with for, for quite a few years at St. Clair. He's my offensive coordinator. Um, just because he really challenged he challenged me when, when he was running the offense and I was running, running the defense at St. Clair to, to, um, you know, just created a great uh, competitive spirit and practice for us. So, you know, th those are probably the first four that jump jump in mind, but there's there's been so many others. It'd be, it'd be you know, I'm sure I'm slighting them but, and no intention to, but there's, I, I, I've been so lucky to be around so many great coaches. I just have. We all feel lucky about being Marine City fans, being around. We've had such a slew of great coaches. I mean, not – Every school has afforded that, so it's been really good. And obviously impacts the young men who go through the program. Yeah. Bill, when did you know that you wanted to coach? When did that moment hit you? Was it a lightning bolt moment, or was it just something you always had in your brain that you were going to do? You know, um, and, and that, that was the last coach I was going to talk to, so it, or talk about in a minute, so I'm glad you brought that up. It was it was some – I don't know exactly when. I, I knew when I was – probably in, I don't know, junior high school or, or, or somewhere around there. You know, I grew up, my, my dad was, was um, he coached, not the high school though, but just coaching, you know, my, my yeah. sister's softball teams and all that. And yeah. like some interactions with the kids. And then um, I just, I love the athletics. Like I think we all do. So it was just another chance to continue to compete. Uh, and I know at a high school, when I, when I left, when I was leaving high school, one of the things I also wanted to do when I was going to Eastern, and, and Fred may or may not remember this, but before I left, I met with his dad, Chuck Windsor, who was another one of those, like I said, not as a coach, coach to coach, but as a player, he was the, the, probably the biggest influence for me as a player, as it, you know, him being my coach. So I, I went, I, I asked him for breakfast and we went over to have breakfast um, in the summertime. And I just wanted to pick his brain and say, what do I need to do to try to become a coach? So I knew when I left high school, even before that, but at that point, I knew that's where I wanted to, I was pretty darn certain that's something I wanted to do with my life. Fred, well, I, what appreciate, is, I appreciate you, you saying about, about my dad. dad. How do you feel about, you know, your dad impacting young people like that? <laughs> Talk a little bit about your dad, Fred. <laughs> he's, you he's, know he's, all the men he's impacted. In the world. Uh, well, he, he has impacted a lot of people because uh, I will tell you, I'm not going to cry. So because um, that's what you're trying to make me do. I guess. We'll, we'll see. Yes, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll no, see. I, won't, I won't because the one thing is, is, uh, you know, I had, I had two parents like Bill's parents, salt of the earth mom very very disciplined if you wear a hat inside the house she'll grab it off your head or t she'll just come out and tell you to take that hat off when you're in my house um had I, I experienced that one day never wore a hat again uh but uh you know that my dad uh, and my mom was very influential to a lot of people obviously and you know and my dad as a coach i mean i have more people asking about my dad every day when i'm out and about I have, I always have a uh, Roger shaft and a lot of, a lot of those guys come in and asking how he's doing. Cause you know, my dad's gone through some medical stuff, but uh, the one thing I'll tell you is, you know, when my dad goes, there's going to be a, there's going to be a big party afterwards and people are going to get up and start talking about him and, and how he influenced them and, and what they meant, what he meant to them, uh, on the football field and even off. And that's why I appreciate Bill, you know, saying that about my dad, because the one thing is I know a lot of people talk about Ben Vitakevich, who was a, was a outstanding coach and, and, a, and, a, and a good friend of my dad. And they were like, a, you know, the right hand and left hand together. Um, and if they, if, and to mind you, if they had the format now where you only had to win, win six games, I don't think there, I don't think there would have been a year um, that they didn't make the playoffs. So uh, my dad has that mind, you know, he had that mind where, you know, we'd go to a football game and my cousin Nancy loves, loves Michigan football and she loves sitting with him because 
he would explain everything, everything to him in detail and say, they're going to run this. They're going to twist here. They're going to do that. And, and it's, it's just crazy. This the mind that he had. So Bill, that I appreciate you, you doing that, but, uh, but you know, as much as your parents are an impact to other people as well, my, mine are the same way. So we, we, we're not too far cut from the uh, same cloth. Yep. Bill, did you do you do that when you watch football, especially with someone that may not have the knowledge to sitting there watching Monday Night Football with the wife? Do you are you explaining to how things are breaking down on the field? Uh, if, if they want to, if they want to, if they want and, to. And, and I tell you what, a lot of coaches will tell you the same thing. It's sometimes hard to watch football with with just regular fans. Um, because you do try to break it down in your head and you hear some comments and the, and the, well, the, the, the stupid comments we say, out. right? Yeah. That, so that's me, Bill. I'm that, I'm that guy. I know nothing about <laughs> football. I'm making all the comments, what they should be doing. <laughs> that's why Bill should just, uh, you know, this season when the lions are playing, cause he's a diehard lions fan, just come up and sit with me and, and, and Kevin Mann and, and Mike. And, you know, when you come up in October, uh, you just sit around and, and watch, uh, watch Billy in action when, when the Lions give up three touchdowns, two pick six. Do you think Bill, like when you watch, <laughs> and they someone, punt, and they punt on first down. <laughs> when you watch someone like Tony Romo, right? I mean, the one thing that he, whether you like him or not, he seems to be able to predict what a team is about to do on the field before it happens. I'm enthralled with that. That, I mean, that just you know, I, I can't believe he can do it like that level that with that high of a success rate, who's one of your favorite announcers that you like to listen to when you watch football? Well, first of all, like you said, I think, I think Tony Romo does do a great job. He does I do agree. a great job. Um, you know, it's funny because until the, well, even the last couple of years, I wasn't able to, to watch many of the games. I don't know if you know, but like last two or three previous two years, three years, I was working for a company called Zebra um, and they do the next gen stats for the NFL. That's one, one of the things they do. That's like they have the sport. So I was going, I, you know, I was at the stadium at 7 a.m. And, and we had to activate the pads and activate the footballs and the, and the pylons and everything. And, and so we were just up in a, in a booth the whole time, uh, time stamping the, the, the entire game as it happens. So you yeah. get next gen stats up there. So, you know, I wasn't able to watch a lot of it. Be honest with you, the last few years until, until now this year I can't because I, I, I'm no longer uh, working for Zebra. Um, but I, you know, I, I like the guy, as, as you said, I, I think Romo's very good. I enjoy the, the, the enthusiastic guys. I, I always like Jan, John Madden. I love, I love those old school with, with, with him and, and, and Summerall. I, I just, I, I, I they, they played I agree. the, I'm right there with well. you. They, they played the yin and yang and played off each other really well. So I, I enjoy that. So Bill, tell it, uh, shifting gears back to Mariner football for a second. Yeah. Who is some a couple teams this year that uh, that are gotcha games that you have to uh, prepare extra special for? And you know, maybe they're maybe it's the same teams, but how you know uh, how do you prepare for some of these games? Do you do things differently, or do you run the same kind of thing? I know you you guys watch a lot of film and stuff. Do you tailor the the game plan to who you're playing, or because Marine City seems to be pretty consistent in their in their game plan? How does that work? Actually, we do tailor every week uh, based on what, what the opponents are doing, what we do well. And even to, as you say, you know, what what we might look like to, to a fan, it might be completely different to us. For instance, if we're going to run an off-tackle play, there might be, we might be blocking it four or five different ways. You know, so it looks to the, to the average fan, they look, they're look, they're, it looks like the same play because the same guy got the ball with the same kind of action. But up front, we're, we're, we're blocking it completely different. We, we change the formations to get angles that we're looking for. And then we might, um, you know, insert another block if we have to or decoy. So when, when you see some of those plays and people say, like I remember when I was a head coach, people say, we ran the same play over and over. People think if you run between the tackles, it's up the middle and you run out the side, it's a sweep. And there's more than two plays, and there's a lot of different ways to attack the defense. Um, and so, you know, we 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 uh, our bread and butter is always going to be the bread and butter. You know, we're going to run trap, we're going to run off tackle, you know, halfback trap. I didn't want to call it the counter, um, but it's just we're going to we're going to make a, a few subtle adjustments 
to be able to get them. And then certainly in the passing game, we're going to, we're going to tweak things in the passing game. And the, the probably the greatest adjustments we make on a regular basis is with formations, just changing where, where not only backs linemen, you know, unbalanced, unbalanced with the, to, to the wing, away from the wing with this wide out, we, we might have unbalanced on the same side as a split end, which is very unusual. You know, so we do all that just to move the defense around to get favorable angles and get favorable creases before the balls even snap. Bill, for a layman like me who watches your games, the old traditional, the, the line would create a hole, the back runs through it. He's got to make some moves, create some space for himself. Maybe you get a little help from a receiver or a fullback. But when you watch Marine City football run, you can't help notice there's so much action after the running back breaks the line of scrimmage. Seems like there's so many things happening afterwards. A lot of a lot of big big hits and and blocks there. Walk me through that process as someone that doesn't know what's going on. What, what is happening there? Well, if you're talking downfield, that's something we really take great pride in is, is understanding which which linemen are, are uh, important at the point of attack and which linemen that maybe aren't going to have an effect on the line of scrimmage and getting downfield to to either either to a, to a linebacker or oftentimes down to that safety or corner from the you know the opposite side corner the offside safety that's, that maybe is going to pursue 15 20 yards downfield but if we get our backside linemen downfield and, and, and picking them up that's when those 20 yard games become 50 50 or 60 yard games. It's what it looks like to me. Like sometimes you see he breaks, he's got a good hole. He breaks the line, let's say. Then you say, oh no, it's going to end here. But then the next thing you know, Mike and, our, and I are looking at each other. The two big explosion blocks happen five, 10 years downfield. Now he's running for 30 yards. Yeah. That, and that, that, that's just a great testament to our kids that uh, they, hustle, they hustle all the way through the whistle and they know that, that they're, they're, you know, sometimes people, and I'll use a, a, a receiver as an example as kind of an analogy for what we're talking about. You get these receivers at all levels, and when they know the uh, the pass is going the other way, they kind of take the play off. You know, they jog their routes. They, you know, they don't finish their routes. They don't come hard out of the cuts, which obviously hurts them in the long run. So sometimes you'll get teams or or even players sometimes, and they know the balls the balls being run away from them, and they might take that play off. And we really try to emphasize and stress, and our kids do a great job of understanding. There's no taking plays off. You're every bit as important uh, by getting downfield and executing what mom, some people might look at. It wasn't an important block, but it's very, very, very important. Like we said, it, it goes from being a, a first down to a touchdown. Six points, six points. Kudos to you and your coaching staff to be able to get the kids by and teach that and then get them prepared every week to do that because okay, okay. it's amazing watching it's you guys. It's fun to watch from the oh, press box for sure. Without a doubt. So we hear about – Sorry, we hear about adjustments throughout the game all the time. What are some of the things that some of the adjustments that the offensive line makes throughout a game? Like, give us an example, like, this isn't working, so you shift to something else. What are some of the changes you make on the offensive line? All right, and, and sometimes that offensive line it also includes maybe a back that becomes almost a glorified second, another offensive lineman. So yeah, a real simple example. Yeah, you guys go enough games where we usually employ a wing back. Sometimes he's out wide, sometimes he's on tight. We, 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 we might face a team that maybe is a little stouter at the point of attack, and we'll take that wing back and, and move him from a wing position behind, the, behind maybe our offensive guard or tackle to essentially become almost a half an offensive lineman there to get, a, get an extra body at the point of attack. But the biggest thing we would do, again, is um, just change our – blocking assignments or rules like what like for instance recognizing sometimes it takes a while for the kids one of the biggest things i try to you know stress to kids is is the hot the next level of an athlete is training your eyes you know the foundation starts at your feet obviously whether you're a shortstop or you're a jump shooter or you're a, a, an offensive lineman it starts from the feet but the next level guys use their eyes tremendously well from pre-snap during play and I try to explain to our, our linemen, you're not hitting a guy. You're hitting a small spot under the, under his play side number. You know, you ge generate more force through a small thing. I use the analogy with them. You know, you're deer hunters. You know, the idea of you aim small, you miss small. And so for, for them, once they can recognize, okay, what is the alignment? Maybe they didn't realize where the guy was lined up. Now we can change our block, whether we're going to cross block as opposed to man block, 
whether we're going to double team and kick out, um, you know, wh whether we, we, you know, sometimes we do a call a full block or loop block where, you know, one lineman will come down and the other, you know, let's say for instance, a guard and a tackle, the, uh, there's a lineman typically, but it, let's say a four man front, there may be a guy over the guard and then the linebacker over the tackle. Traditionally, you're blocking the guy in front of we'll loop where the tackle will come down and block down on the guard. The guard will loop and come around him and lead up on the linebacker, which, which is similar to what you'd see in a power play in the NFL because it just gives better angles at the point of attack. And then sometimes it gives a, a better athlete like a guard on a linebacker. He's lost me already. I, I'm, I, I should be on my second gear by now. <laughs> I do like watching football, Bill. I know that, but my God, it's so it's so scientific, man. When you break it down, it's like crazy. It it is, and I think that's one of the things that as coaches we really love that that next level. It is so um, it, it's it's geometry and physics, man. And and I and I, I love physics, so it's yeah. And, you know, and that's funny that you mentioned that too because. You get all these people, you know, the band wagoners or the, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the coach that's, uh, you know, sitting, sitting in his chair saying, oh, oh my God, they, they, when they hear this and when the, the three or four listeners that we have uh, <laughs> listen to this, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to listen and they're going to see, they're going to, holy shit, that, that, that explanation right there what goes into just one play. That's crazy. And, and so the, they'll find a better, probably a deeper uh, appreciation of what you guys do and what the kids have learned and how they've bought in. You know, you might be able to close the hole underneath some of these people's noses that uh, think that they, they can go out in the field and, and coach a game any day of the week. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's a part of about being a fan, Bill. And I think as coaches, you guys know it, right? You got to have people like us that never played football, don't know what the fuck we're doing in football, but we like to go there, get all liquored up, make bad decisions in the stand, <laughs> and yell out shit that we can't even understand, right? I'll be yelling out there, negotiate the safety! I don't know what the hell <laughs> <laughs> what the hell do I know what that means? I heard it somewhere in a commercial. I replay it. That's you don't have time to negotiate out there. Come on. Yeah. Rob's too busy watching like the old NFL uh, films. And he's like, they should run an 888 and just throw the ball and hope for a I don't even know what that is. I had no idea what that is. This, is. this is why Rob always says, oh, goddamn Michigan, they run off tackle first down, off tackle second down, off tackle third down and punt. That, See, that's, 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 that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what plays I know? I know blue 22, blue 22. You know, that's and you know, o Omaha, Omaha. Yeah, <laughs> I learned that about 10 years ago. Yeah, Omaha <laughs> 67 Razor, 67 yeah. Razor, oh, hot route, hot route. What the hell is hot route? I know, hot route. Is that, it, I know what it is. Is that when a guy sees a hot chick in the stands? Is it that is. hot route? Hot yeah, route, run right at her, run right yeah. at her. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in, in, in all seriousness. There's all levels of, of, of fans out there, and, and having all levels of fans is better than having no fans. It's kind of like that's what I'm seeing, right? The, right? the three or four, you know, the three or four people that be watching this, and I apologize, it'll probably be one or two since I'm on here. But, <laughs> but you know, will we get that many? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask for more money. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a dollar. That would be more money than we're giving you. Now. But this is what I'm saying. Though. You understand there has to be people like me out there, right? I mean, oh, yeah. you got to love the idiot, the idiots, well, no pun intended, but we're out there. But we, we love the game. We love what you're doing out there. We respect it to all get out, all hell. Now, do I want to be out there getting hit like that? Hell no, Bill. No <laughs> way would I want to be out there getting hit like that. But I'll yell at you. I'll scream all kinds of shit at you. I mean, I'm good for that all day long. Hey, a word of advice, Rob. Don't yell at a guy who wears shorts and friggin' uh, – No, I try not to yell at Bill. I really don't. I, I, I've i yelled at coaches before, and then I, I have that thought process. Like, what the hell is that? Oh, well, he's wearing shorts in the middle of winter. And it's 12 degrees. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to fuck with that. There's no yeah. way. I'm <laughs> There's no way. I'm, yeah, he's, Rob's going to – Rob's going to punch Bill – and it's going to be like Burt Reynolds and Hooper and Frank oh. Terry Bradshaw just pulls his tooth out and smiles. <laughs> oh boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> well, no, I'm, 
Keep going. <laughs> the thing you probably didn't catch, obviously, because you're so busy looking at my lovely legs, is I also <laughs> always wear the, the headsets with two, two, uh, one for each ear. So I don't hear anything. Really? Smart. Yeah, I, I, and I purposely Look picked it up. I don't want to hear any of that crap. That's what Ryan, yeah. and that's what Ron Glodich said. That's yeah. what he, he goes, the one time I took him off, I, I heard enough. And I said, yeah, I'm putting my headphones back in. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, we don't want Brady Hoax on the Marina City football I, oh, staff. I, you beat me to it. <laughs> well, you know, I travel for work a lot, Bill. And when I'm in Alabama, there's, and I don't even know his name, but he has the most popular sports radio show in Alabama. It's all about Alabama football, as you can imagine. Sure. And everything. So the, what, another better college football team in the last 20, 15 years than them? No. Right. But nice. those fans get on there bitching all the time saying, yeah, but we've never produced an NFL court. Now, this is before Mac Jones. They always find something, right? We always find something. We go to the, we're like water. We go to the path of least resistance. We're always finding something to bitch about. And that's, that's, part the, that's part Fred of the deal. Huh? That's part of the deal. You expect it. That's all part of the deal. That's part of the, what yeah. you sign up for. You know you're going to get it. I remember, you know, Fred was talking earlier about, the, you know, what they're asking about the um, coaches that, you know, had a great impact. and. I can remember when I was first coaching at Marine City, and my parents always came to the game, very supportive people. And, and they would, they, my dad says, you know, you guys are haven't lost a game in a regular season game in two years, and you think you guys have been 0 and 18. These people are yelling nonstop like you're idiots. And, and so I said, they're going to do that. And when I got my uh, my first head coaching job, and and uh, my wife was a little nervous because she you know, she does she she takes that very personally because she's my wife. She gets she gets bothered by it. I don't get bothered by it. And I said, hun. They, they put Jesus Christ on a cross, and, he, and, he, and they killed him, and they booed Joe Montana out of San Francisco. I ain't Jesus, and I ain't Joe Montana. They're going to boo me, and I don't, it doesn't matter. If those guys that, that, that are truly great Good point. were run out of town, I'm going to get run out of I mean, that, that's just part, that's part of the deal. So it doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't bother me. I'm glad people are there excited. It sure beats having a Pans that are not passionate don't care. Ap apathy is what kills you. Yeah. Marine City fans are passionate about football. It's a good thing. We, uh, you know, we are passionate about it, like I said. But uh, wh what you guys have been able to do for these last – how many years has it been, Fred, really? Uh, I mean, is it 20, say, 25? Well, you figure we graduated in 87, so was it 30 – 30 something 30 years, years. 30, 30, 30, 35 years, 35 years, and mean, you've done it 36. If you want to throw 80, 86 in there too, because that's when it, yeah, and you've done it more, work and team multiple administrations. That's the impressive part. I mean, that's like, you know, Fred and I are big hockey fans and I'm a lightning fan. I live here in Florida and everybody talks about how great they are. I'm like, it's more impressive that they've, won a, a Stanley Cup in 2004 with a completely different organization, and they've been relevant that whole time. Look at the Patriots, probably the greatest pro football dynasty or pro dynasty ever, and they struggled the last year, two, two years ago, after they lost some key players. And after Belichick goes, will they be able to keep up the run that they have? Probably not. That's that's a true testament to an organization that can do it through multiple administrations. Yeah, that's the top down. Like you're saying, that's then that's one thing that that Marine City High School has done a great job is it's been the administration that has been very supportive of their coaches. Let them coach, and then when when uh, parents are are uh, you know ready to string someone up, they they don't let them. They they don't even they they won't even get give them the give them the ear. And so they they support the coaches and, and don't listen to parents that are that are upset about things like that. And that's that's one of the reasons they 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 had that success. Lions fan, huh, Bill? I am a Lions fan. <laughs> a little more. Oh, okay. Really? And I have no shit. I'm not zero shame over it. No. Nope. Yeah, me neither. But yeah, well, hey, let me just tell you, if you're in the room with him, and you start talking bad, you can see him see him getting upset, like Alex Walson said in the car to the, going to the Kiss concert. Tick 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 tick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! You lit his ass up that night. I'm like, oh, I've never seen Billy this passionate until I went. I sat and watched a friggin', friggin' Lions game with him. I'm like, okay, never. Note: Do not say anything derogatory about the Lions <laughs> Bill, uh, yeah. eight, eight win, uh, eight over under for Lions. Where do you got him? Eight wins. 
Over and under. Because I, I, I thought I you think said it, over and under was seven. No, uh, I said they're going to have seven wins. You said they're going to have eight. So I'm going to say eight is the over under mark. Because that's our highest win mark. So over under at eight. happy to build that. I think that way. I'm surprised. I'm impressed. I, uh, in all seriousness, I, I'd go nine before I'd go seven. Wow. 17 game, 17 game uh, season this year again, right? So, and, and that does help, but there's, and there's so you're you saying, a, lot, a lot of factors, a lot of factors. Their, their schedule is, 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 you know, all those years they were, they, when they had crappy seasons, they always seemed that for whatever reason they had a tough schedule. Their schedule is pretty, pretty comparatively. Now, again, the NFL is so balanced. That even the bad teams can beat beat. Well, they get to play the pre- they get to play the pretty little girl twice this year. Yep. You know who that is, right? That's oh, you Aaron mean Rodgers. you mean uh, you mean uh, Nicholas Cage uh, from uh, Eric Con- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Con- Con- Air. Excuse me, Con- Con- Air. from Con Air. What a um, douche! How many how many <laughs> games? How many games does any uh, a lion running back go over one hundred yards? Ah, uh, wow! Well, if they're going to get nine wins, it's going to have to be quite a few. That's a great question, but no, I want to hear what he has because I think well, well part of it has to do. I think they're going to have a two two back system. I think yeah, right. Have, so so do I don't, I don't think is, one guy's going to get tons tons of tons of carries. I'll say maybe three. Three? Well, hey, three's a lot. I mean, they've had three hundred yard rushers in the last twenty years or something. I mean, <laughs> correct, but that's a pass. So that's, that's pretty bad. good. I was going to actually say four or five because that offensive line is probably top three in the league. That and, and that's when, why I give the nod, but I agree. When healthy. But yeah. but if I don't know if one guy's going to get twenty carries a right. game, that's why I'm not sure right. how, if how many you know they'll rush more than hundred collectively. But as an individual, I'm not so sure. Will any receiver have over fifty receptions? Oh yeah, yeah. St. St. Brown, I'd be surprised if he doesn't have at least eighty. Yeah. I think I Reynolds say 80, but I thought, yeah, that's a I, little bit for. I think, I think Reynolds has a good chance of doing that. I think, uh, um, I think Hawkinson, um, he might not have 50, but he he could have 35 to 40. You know, you know, you know, uh, 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 you know, St. Brown. He uh, if he gets eight catches in game one, he'll be one of only four receivers in the history of the league to have. Um, Eight or more catches in seven straight games. So really? Up, yeah. Well, he was their only target last year, basically. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That is true. So, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you was, um, will Goff start and end the season as the starting quarterback? If he's not injured, yes. Really? Okay. Because, as Fred pointed out a minute ago, the, uh, the offensive line. If you looked at his numbers when he was with L.A. and even at the end of the last year with the Lions, when he's, his numbers when he was at L.A., when they, when that girlie was there, when they ran the ball well, yeah. he was number two in the league in play-action pass. Yeah, he loves play. Rating. So he has, you know, that, that's his game. Ask him to sit back in the pocket and pick your part. He's not going to do it. He's going to make mistakes. But play-action pass where they get, you know, they got seven or eight guys in the box, he, 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 he plays that game well. So uh, – Especially and when DeAndre Swift catches the ball well out of the backfield yeah. too, and that's what the, that's how they're designing their offense. And the two backups, I don't think, are any threat to them. Oh God! You know, it's not. It's that's not why like we. The, that's why we were saying that they should have uh, went after Baker Mayfield for a fifth round pick. I'd, especially for I'd, how cheap Baker went for. Yeah, went I, for I mean, I, I don't know what he's like in the locker room, but I would have liked to seen those two battle it out to see who was going to be the starter, and if some, if one of them got hurt. At least you knew that you had somebody that you could hang your hat on. You know what I mean? Well, I think yeah. you go in. I think you go in the season with golf as a starter. You don't take it away from him, but you let him know that if your if your performance in games do, is not at a certain level, that Baker's there. Yeah, they, you know it, it's so it's so weird how quarterbacks get this almost free pass as as far as performance. It, almost any other. I shouldn't say quarterbacks. It's the skilled positions. I mean, receivers do yeah. the same thing. They, yeah. sure. But 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 if a but a receiver but if a receiver went three or four games and kept dropping the ball, at some point they're not throwing to him. They're not. They're gonna be set. Quarterbacks, you know, they, it's like you, you they they get this if if they are the starter, so called. You got to let them ride it out. 
and I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying that's the mentality. It's it's uh, you can't you can't you can't bench them. Well, the lion, 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 so, lions and, are going to so, have to ride them out for sure because they have no right. idea. Um, yeah, so, Billy, Billy, wasn't it was it was it Stafford's last year or Goff's Goff's first year that the Lions had more drops from their uh, receiving core than any other team in the NFL? That was, that was Stafford's. Stafford's last year, yeah, and they did it quite a few times with them actually. Yeah. We're Stafford. We don't know how you, you're a Lions fan, but the three of us are huge Stafford fans. So we became a Ram fan at the Super Bowl. And, of course, that was a hot topic through the state of Michigan, especially in the Detroit area. How could you support him? And But we always felt he was a gamer. He was a tough kid. He did everything right. What could you, more could you have asked for a guy other than he played on one of the worst organizations in the history of football? I mean, yeah. How, how can you resent? He didn't do anything. I mean, he busted his butt. He played injured, played with a broken back, played as a rookie with dislocated shoulder and, and goes in the next play. He gave everything he had. Never complained. Never yeah, held, never held out. Thank God the Browns called timeout. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I don't understand how people got so mad at him. He, he didn't hold out. He didn't – he helped us. Correct. He, the, he, the draft picks I mean, he, he got. Yeah, he had read, he negotiated a bunch of times of his contract so they could sign other people. And I, problem and like is, is the people that make him the decision who's signing, they you know, weren't picking the right, right people. Right. I mean, how, how many seasons would they have gone 0-16 if Stafford wasn't the quarterback? Correct. I think some of the games they won because of him. So I don't know how anybody could slight him, to be honest. No, and I never – you know, it's always – Talk about fans a minute ago, how we, we do dumb things as fans. That's one of the things that drives me nuts is when people were, would say the same old lines were the worst pro, franchise in all sports. Right or wrong, I'm just saying when they make that claim and then they say Stafford's the reason we lost. No, you just said we're going to lose no matter what because we're a horrible franchise. So right. how can you blame Stanford? It, 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 it could have been stinking Montana or, or Peyton Manning. If you think the Lions are going to lose because they're the Lions, then it doesn't matter who's there. So how can you blame Stafford? We, when you say well, because because the, the 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 Detroit fans are famous for blaming the point guard, blaming the uh, the pitcher, blaming the goalie, and blaming the quarterback. And they're the yeah. only, and, and they're the only well, ones that did something right. Not, yeah. not only the fans, but those idiots on the ticket didn't help when Stafford left. They were like, oh, good they riddance, were the worst. You know? You're fucking idiots, man. I, Bill, I didn't live in the state for 35 years, came back for about three years, about, well, three years ago, three and uh -huh. a half years ago. And, uh, you know, I didn't know much about staff. I'd watch them sometimes. Not like Lions get a lot of national TV coverage ever. So I went to a couple Green Bay games in Green Bay. He was there. He, they lost, but he played his out of his mind, threw for 400 yards in one game. I don't know how in the hell they lost the game, but they did. And I get to back to Michigan and I'm listening to these guys on the ticket and they're just blaming Stafford for, you know, 70 years of losing football and they're blaming one guy for all the rows. I'm like, these guys sound like idiots. They really do. Especially what was the guy I like for a little bit, did a lot of the hockey Caputo. Yeah. Pat Caputo. Oh, Pat Caputo. He was good at every other sports that he broke down, but when he got on the lions and anti Stafford, I'm like, he, I wanted to call him and say, you just sound like a moron every time you talk like this. Do, do they do it to get people to call in, maybe? I, I maybe, probably it. Maybe he's not that clever because he doesn't seem very clever to me, but maybe he's not that clever. But uh, he's a... he's more of a savant when it comes to baseball because he, he, he I think he's more of a baseball guy. When I mean, you get into football, eh. Hockey, he's the only one who could talk all sports, right, Fred? Yeah, he can, but I think he's uh, – He's more focused in on baseball and hockey than he is really football and baseball. So um, I, I just, my biggest thing is, you know, people listen to the radio, they listen to these guys and, and they believe everything that they say. Yeah. If they, if they said men could breastfeed, they would probably say, Oh, yeah, okay, guess what? That's, that's what's, that's what it happens. It's real. It, well, people are claiming it now, aren't they? Well, yeah. I have nipples. Great. Can you milk me? Trend, can, you trend milk me? Uh, can you milk me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Let's go down that road. 
we already got enough people suing us. We don't need any more. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bill, the one thing that I've noticed about the Lions, which I the reason why I think they're you know have a chance for eight wins, I'm starting to see a balance of between the offense and defense actually getting the the right type of uh, units or players to to form a, a cohesive unit that isn't you look and you're like going who is this guy where did he come from you know and now that you got Aiden Hutchinson on an end and you got uh Charles Harris on the other and you still have a, a Cora and then you got um you know the the rookie linebacker uh, Malcolm is it Rodriguez Rodriguez or Mel- yeah. Yeah, Rodriguez um they're raving about him you know this Jerry Jacobs who is an un- undrafted uh player and and he Here's here's going to be the real op- opportunity for Jeff Akuda, you know, to prove that he w- isn't a bust and he and he was not a good pick, because finally I think they're going to actually, you know, blitz and and put some pressure on, on the quarterback. So that's why I'm a little bit more optimistic. And as far as offensively, I think they have enough weapons where if they get some turnovers and they're on, on, uh, you know, the team's. Uh, you know, on their side of the field, you know, we're not going to just hopefully not just see three points. We're going to see seven more often. That's so that's kind of where I'm at. And I don't, I don't think a lot of other, these other teams, like I don't think Minnesota improved themselves and they were a dumpster fire last year, Chicago dumpster fire. The thing is, is if you can sneak up, if you can sweep those two and you can, and split with green Bay, and well, you, Green Bay didn't get better by losing. No, Denver. they did not get. No, they, and they lost their best player, um, other than the douche that stands behind the, you know, the center. Um, you know, I don't Pretty think. Little running, girl. Oh yeah, so Karen Rogers. <laughs> so, but uh, but I mean that's where the optimistic uh, approach in my now I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, all all of us here talking about it, um, we're all hopeful that you know that we have some meaning meaningful football in November. Right. You know, and, you know, and obviously the, the unfortunate thing is they're playing the bills on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving. And I'm like, oof. <laughs> other than that, I don't see any other team that really scares me other than Buffalo. Um, I don't, New England doesn't scare me. Oh, um, well, you know, New I, England should. Yeah. No. And I, I mean, you know, Mac Jones can improve all he wants, but guess what? It doesn't mean that he's, any better than he was last year. I, I think he wasn't if, bad last year though. No, no. Well, no, by no. definition, if he improves, he's better than the last year. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying if they're saying that he's improved, but yeah, you can't, you can't say that until you start playing the game. So, right. but you know, you, you know, you get to play, I think they play the jets that that should automatically be a win. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and they're going to be playing, you know, you know, we always, every year, you know, you might have had a team that had a good year the prior year. And then all of a sudden, you know, one injury or, you know, there's, you know, some issue in the locker room. Next thing you know, that team's really struggling. So, um, like Sounds I said, like I, you're lobbying for 10 wins, Fred, to me. No, I, I mean, you're, you're, you, you are saying five wins. I am. Rob, Robbie's saying Sticking seven. To it. I say seven. And I said eight and, and Bill's, you know, saying nine. So, so, Obviously, you know, being a little optimistic, I guess the one thing is, is the word hope comes into play every year. But, you know, the thing is, is we're not the Cleveland Browns and we're not Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, I, I see I see the improvements that Detroit's making over those teams. I mean, Cleveland is a complete cluster beep. and Not, not a dumpster and, fire? No. And then, and then uh, Jacksonville is <laughs> Jacksonville. Okay. I mean, they, with all the problems they had with urban Meyer, getting rid of him and, you know, Trevor Lawrence, you know, had a rough year. They didn't, they made some improvements. They made some good picks, but they again, went out with a lot of free agents. Yeah. Yeah. And they did get some free agents. So, I mean, they'll probably be a little bit better, but, but you know, the thing is, I, th- I have faith in what Troy Weaver's doing with the Pistons. I have faith in what uh, Chris Spielman and, and Brad Holmes is doing. I have faith in Steve Eiserman. The weirdest thing ever is I have no faith in the Tigers. I mean, and it's shocking now. They are going to, they are, they're probably going to be what I call the epitome of suck for a while. Okay. I see the other ones slowly moving in the right direction. And 
hopefully, you know, hopefully be competitive for years to come. Hockey okay. fan, Bill? Are you a hockey fan? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Fan. I'm, I'm an all-sports fan, but yeah, big big hockey fan as well. And a huge, obviously, a Wings fan growing up here. And, you know, you, you, it's interesting that the three teams you just mentioned, Fred, and your assessment on the Lions, which I agree with, but the biggest thing that, that wasn't mentioned yet, and it's the biggest thing, the reason why Marine City has great success over the last 30 years in football. It's the reason that um, the Patriots maintain that long success regardless of the of, of – the, the player changes. It's the same thing the Lions did. It's, it's, and I learned this a long time ago, culture over scheme. It starts with your culture. And so the Lions this year, I, I don't know, they, they, may, they may not get the wins that we're hoping for, but they're going in the next two or three years. They've completely changed that culture just like the Pistons have and the Wings have when they brought Eisman back. It's the type of player they're looking. It's the environment that they have that makes – players want to play with and for each other. And you, when you're trying to find the next, just the great player here and the great player there, it doesn't work. Go to the, go to, go to the, the nets in the NBA, go to the Lakers. And the, I mean, these teams, they say, if we just get the, the right, the, the best stars and have the best coach that with the best X's and O's, and it might work for one season, but it doesn't, bring about true change. And I think the Lions have finally hit the only culture. I remember a good culture that, that, that the Lions had since I've been around and I've been watching forever. I, I was, I was fortunate during the very Sanders years. I had, I had season tickets or through the, through the nineties. I think most people would agree. Wayne Fonts was probably not looked at as a great X and O coach, but one thing he did is he created a culture during that decade and they had success oh, compared yeah. to what any other decade that we've had. The players because loved them. They, they, they loved him. They loved each other. They, they, I mean, you could see there was a frat, but they played with, with passion. They, 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 that's a team that liked to hit. They, and they brought guys in that wanted to hit. Spearman was an undersized and under and, and under speed linebacker that played the Pro Bowl because he had attitude and brought, brought, you know, again, played the game with violence. Benny Blades, you know, they had, they had a, a formula of types of players that wanted. And that's what that's what Eisman's doing right now with his guys, and that's what the Lions have done. And that's not, unfortunately, what Avila's done. He's been trying to piecemeal and find this guy and that guy instead of change from the ground up. But not hit the culture. Yeah, that's that's for, that's for, first and foremost. That's that's why Alabama does what they do. That, that's again, that's why Marine City. Their culture is more important than schemes because everybody, if the scheme was most, if you you run the same scheme. Scheme then it's not enough. I'm a big culture guy. I do it in business and businesses are run off cultures. You can oh, yeah. run your household off culture. It's about team building environment. I listened to a guy by the name of Simon Sinek. If you've never listened to him before, he's a great motivational speaker. He could, he could motivate an, an athletic program to a boardroom. It wouldn't matter. He's that good. And um, we're going to have, and Freddie set this up for a couple weeks from now, and, and we're having him on the show because we think he's starting to change the culture where he's coaching is the football coach at Cross Lex. And we heard some good things yesterday from uh, Brady and what in the culture that's happening up there. And we're excited because I like to talk culture. I know Marine City built their program off of culture. Yeah, I think he's doing the same thing. I'm excited to tap in and find out how he's done it because – He's going to be the first one there to start kind of changing it. So it's going to be interesting. I hope you're right, Bill. I hope they get nine wins. <laughs> they will. I hope they I'm will. dead wrong. I hope I'm dead wrong. Listen, yeah, I think more he's importantly, the resident expert, right? He's the football guy. If he's saying nine, he's got to be more right than the rest of us. Well, well hey, you know, <laughs> Billy, hey, Billy's, uh, Billy, uh, you hit it right on the nose about the culture versus scheme. And you know what, you don't hear, you don't hear a lot of people bring that uh, to the forefront. So they understand it. You know, and the thing about bill too, is he's not only the, you know, an X's and O's and, and about, about, about learning and, and, and teaching these kids, but bill is a huge music fan too. And it's, <laughs> and I'll tell you now, bill is pretty eclectic with his music. He's uh you know, he's got, he's huge on, on, on like the eighties rock. And, and when he was heavy in metal, I think it was yeah. heavy metal. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so Billy, so the, I know that some of the big band, if you, you had to say the top three bands that you, that you uh, 
absolutely would love to go see or have seen, and you would go every year to see him if they came to town, who would it be? Well, I mean, if people were still alive, you mean, or whatever. Yeah. Live or I mean, dead. Pantera. I, would, I, I, no, I tell you, I, 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 I would see Jay Giles every time they come around if I could. What is what this Jay Giles? Jay Giles, I'm telling you. Jay Giles is I'm missing out. I don't understand I it. Fucking listen. I, it, it depends what Jay Giles you're you you're familiar with. If you're going to the 80s, Older. you're right. But you'll go to the 70s. You go to their you go to their Older, live stuff yeah. in the 1970s. Full house live. Is, oh, oh, good yeah. lord. Awesome. Blow your face out. That stuff yep. is just Mm-hmm. You can't be but in a good mood listening to that stuff. Yeah, I, and you, you, you got to love Peter Wolf because he was married to Faye Donnelly. Uh, well, I don't know. I, that. I mean, how, how the hell did that happen? That's like Rick Ocasek with Paulina Morsakova. Everybody's talking to Jake Giles. Jake Giles is this. Jake Giles. Rocky Mafia. Everybody's talking to Jake Giles. What else you got, Bill? Who else? Who else? Jake Giles. I, I, I would want to see The Who every chance I got. The Who? Okay. The original, you know, with, with Keith, Keith, Keith Moon, the whole crew. Bob and, uh, and I don't care which version, I would see Van Halen every chance I got. Nice. Yeah. Now here's the question. Believe it or not, and I didn't care much for their band when the, you know their their album. I saw them with Gary Sharon, and they were good. Wow, a guy from Extreme. Yeah, mm-hmm. but live they were still really good. They were outstanding. Right. So here's the here's the d- big debate, and and he, Mike or. Uh, Billy, about, uh, I'd say about four or five years ago, went back and forth on uh, on Facebook. Is it David Lee Roth or is it Sammy Agar? <laughs> and for me, the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, mor- that morning was not yes. Were you for <laughs> no, you I, I like them both. I like, I, I mean, musically, now live, I'd rather see with Sammy Hagar. I've seen it. You know, with, with David Lee, if, if you look at and, and watched, went to and or watched a lot of the, the live footage with Van Halen with, with David Lee, we're talking concert, right? He was not very good. He was good one every five nights. A lot of times vocally he didn't sound good. A lot of times he didn't say anything. He wouldn't yeah. you know, actually sing the songs. Now, studio-wise, no, no, I, I just love them both. I mean, my, my pride, you know, my top five Van Halen albums, three of them are David Lee Roth albums. So I moved to California in like 1987 and we lived down the 10 freeway from San Dimas. That's where Van Halen is from. And so that's Bill big... and Ted. Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> Bill and Ted. Yeah. <laughs> and just... two members of Motley Crue and two members of Motley Crue, by oh, really? the way. All right. Oh yeah. So they, um, huge area for, and, and, and actually, the town next to us is where um, uh, the th- the Red Rocker grew up in Fontana. Amy Hagar. Amy Hagar was from Fontana, but when David Lee Roth was the singer for Van Halen, that was a culture. That was just yeah. a culture. That yeah, was, you know, whether the music was good or bad, it was a culture. Everybody bought in when. When Hagar got there, Van Hagar became Van Hagar. It was more of a business. It was good. Nothing any different from what there was before. I mean, it was better, good, indifferent. But David <laughs> was the culture. Sammy was – it was the business. My opinion. That's my opinion. So you're a David Lee guy, obviously. Oh, I love David. <laughs> you know, he was such a showman. I mean – He whether, was a great showman, no doubt yeah, about it. I mean, that was the thing. He, even if he was off that night – he was still going to give you something that you left talking about forever. Yeah, he was he was a legend. Whereas you know, Sammy Hagar is a better musician and singer. There's no question. Oh, there, there's yeah, no doubt about that. Absolutely. And by far, as I would, and Billy knows what I'm going to say when I say this. One of the top five albums that were ever that ever came out was Standing Hampton. And. Yeah, it's it's it, there's not a bad song, um, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, him as an as a solo act, he is he's up here, you know. And but you know, when he was with Van Halen, you know, and I think a lot of people were like, you know, where's Dave? Where's Dave? And it it, it took a, it took a little bit for uh, you know people to get used to having Sammy Hagar there because I, I will be honest, they they kind of they really started uh, catering to the man 
at 1984. And then it, and it just continued to be that way. You know, where a lot of bands say, they, they, you know, screw the man, we're going to just go, we're going to, we're going to do it our way. And that's the way it's going to be. And those are the ones that are typically legends, but, but, you know, Van, you know, Van Halen, Van Hagar, whatever you want to call it. Um, you knew you're going to get a good show regardless. Well, I and, see. and, and, and I, I would disagree with certainly what you say about David Lee Roth. He, he one of the great, great front mans along with like Freddie Mercury, you know, and, and sure. but um, to me still Van Halen is Eddie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh well. Yeah. 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 There's no question about that. And so, so, I see his son is on tour right now. He's posted yeah, yeah. tour. Yeah. Yeah. His know. band Mammoth. Yeah, yeah, Mammoth. Yeah, but Sammy Hagar after Van Halen, uh, he's gone downhill. His music is is awful. Well, have you seen him? He looks like just an old Jewish guy. I mean, that's what he. He's, uh, he, he's he doesn't. Not, look like I think him. Sammy Hagar looks good for his age. What are you talking? Oh, about? did, did you think Sammy Hagar? I meant David Lee Roth. Yeah, uh, yeah, David yeah. Lee Roth is just, you know, he's a shell of what he used to be, but that was the product of his system in that culture. They they partied every night. I mean, it was like uh, they, he's, they showed he, Molly yeah. Crew and those other groups yeah. how to do it. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> he is not only a shell of himself, but he, he I don't think he he's in any right frame of mind anymore. I think he's completely clueless. So I've I've seen him. I saw his interview with Joe Rogan, and he thought he was being funny and joe rogan was just calling him out on a bunch of stuff and then he his whole attitude changed and he started getting pissed at rogan really he's like, yeah he's like hey dude we're sick of your bullshit you know let's 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 you know quit being a showman and, and be real real on a on a you know we you i mean he's got the short hair he's got the hook going on and, and he just uh, he just looks like a he looks like an old man that just Trying to hang on. He to is old. Well, he is yeah. an old man now. I, I, old wait. Trying to get soup in the deli, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When, I, when I when you know when he came back around that last time when he when he joined him in that that re reunion, if you looked at some of the footage, because I, I didn't get a chance to see him, I wanted to, but I couldn't. Um, you look at the footage. I equated it to like Fat Elvis. He was all of a sudden posing when he was younger. He was doing the jumps and everything. Now he was posing in the in the jump position, but he wasn't actually flying around to to your point fred i just don't think he's in the shape yeah. physically to be able to do what he used to do as a, as a no. showman and probably because of the some of the recreational decisions that was happening in the 70s and 80s <laughs> you think <laughs> i like and mike that. i gotta i gotta take a i shouldn't say offense but i gotta i gotta wholeheartedly disagree with your comment about sammy stuff since since he left van halen really okay if, if you have, have you have you ever listened to the first uh, chicken foot album yeah, with, with yeah, Joe that, Satriani and, and, yeah. and Chad I mean, the, Smith, and that, the that super was, group. Was, yeah, that was pretty good. That was I'm, really good. I'm talking yeah. about it's like too much ju juju and mastaquila and all that bullshit. That's so fucking plastic. It makes me puke. <laughs> well, he's Honestly. all brought into Cabo Wabo and that. Scene. Yeah, that's it. That yeah. whole thing. That's, I mean, that's his whole. That's his shtick. That's, that's his shtick. shtick. That's he's got a yeah. shtick. Cabo Wabo. Yeah. yeah. I saw them. It was like a. I didn't see him live, but it was a you know recorded thing, like at one of it, at his bar, the Cabo Wabo Canteen or whatever. And they were god awful. Holy shit! I don't know if they were just completely blown out, wasted. <laughs> but Michael Anthony was playing bass and singing, and they were awful. I mean, they were all they were completely off key. It was embarrassing. I'm like, I can't believe they're actually take recording this or televising this. It was so bad. It Bill, there's a new group that's going to storm the St. Clair County area. I don't know if you've heard <laughs> about it yet, but. There we go. Um, you might want to get tickets. You <laughs> might want to, you know, start in. But a new musical group that's going to storm St. Clair County. Fred, you want to give a little uh, teaser? <laughs> that's here. Mm -hmm. Want a fresca? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're waiting. Uh, well, as of right now, uh, Mike Ward, Fred Windsor, Don Gardner, and possibly – not saying it's in stone. Uh, Brandon Pavlov are getting together and having a group. Oh, cool. So, 
Not so, you're just gonna, you guys just gonna like do the, do the bar server? Are you gonna try to actually polka? Like, they're gonna do a lot of polka, a lot of old wedding yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna open up with a theme song from Fat Albert. So <laughs> I wish we could play. I wish we could play polka. That'd be awesome. I'd be all for that shit. But, I mean, every every nine out of ten uh, polka songs are about drinking. So, <laughs> what do you mean nine? I think all ten. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, you could be right. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Uh, but uh, hey, Billy, uh, um, you know, one thing I, I wanted to tell you is, you know, I, is it's always good to reminisce a little bit um, about hanging out with you and. And doing some karaoke and being the being the young Republicans, <laughs> uh, that was kind of funny. But yeah, I, you know, the one thing is is uh, hey, uh, thanks for uh, saying yes to being my best man. That was that was a great night. And uh, and you were we, second choice. I don't know if you know that. Uh, he was not a second choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing with my marriage. I'm the second or third choice. I, I can live with that. Live with that. <laughs> no, but <laughs> yep. Uh, Billy pro- probably gave one of the classic uh, groomsmen speeches, and I, 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 how I didn't piss my pants, I don't know, but it was hilarious. I, I wish, I wish you could recite it again, because yeah, I wish it had been recorded. It yeah, was, uh... I, I, it is recorded. I have it on film. You know, so he started out with a, uh, you know, he back watches back. it in tears every other night. Oh, that. <laughs> In, in his wedding dress. <laughs> yeah. you know, he started out by going, you know, back in the caveman days, you know, the caveman used to hit the woman over the head. He goes, well, I was just at the driving range with Fred. If that was the case, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> you know, and he goes, he goes, he goes, as you got a little bit older and everything, he goes, he goes, usually the man would marry into money. And, and then he goes, then I thought of Chuck. If Fred had, if, oh, uh, arranged, arranged marriages. Arranged, arranged marriage. marriage. He goes, he goes, and if that was the case, Chuck would have had him or, or be arranged with the daughter of of uh, Altus of Brewing Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Chuck owned half of it anyway by stock, basically. Yeah, that, yeah. And then the other ones, he goes. Then the third way, you know, as you get, he goes. Usually, it's about the sex. Well, we know that's not that. Uh, that's not happening. No offense, Fred. Bill, nice. Oh. Uh, just, a, just a quick history of marriage. Just a, just a, the yeah. history of marriage. I like and then, then, then he a tried to football coach with no pants, dude. You oh my god, it, fun, it, man, I like it. Was, it. it was it was funny as hell. I mean, I, I'm like I'm you can I'm just busting out laughing, and you can hear me in the background while they, you know, they're filming, and so I I thought that was that was classic. So. Uh, it's always good memories like that. Yeah, and I, I really, I, I consider that an honor. I was, I really appreciated being, being that, having that opportunity. So it was, and it was cool. It was a, it was a great day. I mean, the, the, oh god, you know the, 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 the first time I'd seen NFL, uh, you know, vests for the, the cummerbunds the and vests. Yeah. NFL vests or oh yeah, yeah. Here, <laughs> here's a cool thing though. Uh, we uh, Ian Caldwell, who was my, was the DJ at the. Uh, knows um, uh, the, annou- the NHL announcer uh, Mike Emmerich. You you know Mike Emmerich, right? yeah, Doc um, Emmerich, yeah, yeah, Doc Emmerich. Well, he is the voice who announced all of us coming out from behind the curtain. You know, and and he and they uh, everybody had a nickname and and, and it was funny, but uh, but that was what that was, was cool yours, Fred? What was yours? Uh, uh, Freddie Boom Boom or something like that. I don't like, remember, you, but you had the cow, you had the Cowboys vest. I, I, I do recall. Oh yeah, I was oh, diehard Cowboys. Oh yep. God, <laughs> what the fuck, Cowboys? Yeah, he loved the Cowboys. He yeah. was like, he loved what do you mean yeah. loved? Well, he does actually. You know why he became a Cowboy fan? Watch well, too many losing Lion games, crying. Chuck made him become a Cowboy fan because he didn't want to see him cry anymore. That's really yeah, the Metropolitan <laughs> Stadium. Uh, two, min- uh, two minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. Detroit has the ball. They can't lose the game. They run the ball three times. It's, it's snowing out. The running back falls down a couple times. Fourth down, Herman Weaver goes back to punt. 
he gets the ball, he goes to punt, and we they block it in the end zone, and they fall on it to win the game. And that was the last time my dad said, "You're done. You're what? You're gonna you trouble know, with the snap." <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't drop the ball; he got blocked. So, it, so, uh, but yeah, that that was those memories stick with you pretty uh, pretty much. So, but uh, it was it, it was a cool night. That man it was a blowout. Man, everybody that was there, we had. I think we had over well over 500 seven, yeah. it was 550 people or whatever but it was it was a it was an absolute riot and, and Bill you got anything uh, before we end this show anything to promote anything to talk about with Marine City football or something we should maybe the first game where we're we're going to watch that at what do you got You know what's what's, what's kind of cool is um, the first game this year we're doing kind of a um, a, a Mac uh, silver, almost like a scale BWAC crossover first game. So, you know, um, we're, we're going to open up with Armada. I think uh, Marysville, I think they're opening up with maybe Almont and St. Clair opening with Crosslex or something like that. So that's kind of a cool thing to – some of those local ties, we've never seen these guys. It's been so long. You know, once upon a time, we all played each other. Not not Almont and Armada, but, you know, Crosslex and, and – and, uh, you know, Croslex and Yale and Marine City, St. Clair, Algonac, Richmond. How long were they in a league? I mean, and Emily City. Emily City. It, it was. It was when it folded up. It was a, the scale was the oldest league in the state when it folded. Wow, really? Yeah. Yep. And so it's kind of cool going back and, and at least getting some of that local flavor. Where we're going to see some, not only some teams that maybe we haven't seen in a while, but um, th- there's kind of that. I don't know. It's almost like the American League, National League arguments these days around here. You know, the, the MAC thinks they're better than, than, than the BWAC and vice versa. And, you know, you get a chance maybe in the playoffs. So it's got a kind of cool, almost, I wouldn't say rivalry, but, but kind of the same feel to it. Yeah, especially when you, uh, uh, Armada was one win uh, away from playing you guys in, yeah. in the semifinal. I told Fred last year, I said, hey, Armada's beating Richmond right now. He's going, no, that's impossible. I'm, I'm looking on the, ticker right now they're beating richmond and they did um armada first game at home what what's the date on that bill what what's the first you know we're we're playing on that friday so you know i i could probably pull up on my calendar no don't worry i mean we just i didn't know if you had it right offhand but uh 26 it's the 20 the 26 yeah Excellent. So if you yep. want to go out and see some crazy man in shorts, but it will be kind of warm. So it's not like you're not getting the full, the full Monty there. So you could come out and see. Well, Bill. I hope we're not getting the full, not the full Monty. <laughs> Christ <laughs> sakes. He said, we don't know what he wears underneath the shorts. Hey, He's keep, already said that. keep the shorts long, Bill. That's all I can say. Don't be doing the, the short shorts or the well, hot you're pants. A, or, you're yeah, a like, hell of like a guy. The, you the really great- are. The gray bike shorts from uh, from the yeah. late, <laughs> yeah. uh, early uh, the nylon early, early 90s. Well, yeah. the 89, 90s. Zubas, they're Zubas with the big pockets. Well, <laughs> here, well, it, the cool thing is that that week I'll see Billy Choice because on the 23rd we're uh, uh, we're gonna see uh, Sammy Hagar. Well, yeah. there you go. not cool that, for him, maybe for you. Yeah, right. And, ha, 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 ha. and then I'll see him on the football field, and I'll be in the booth, and he'll be down. Down the field, Colin plays. So we'll be ready. Actually, you know what? Uh, I, at um, the home game, I'm only going to be able to coach at practices this year because my oh. son plays. My son plays varsity at St. Clair, so I got to go watch his game. We heard a little rumor yesterday, actually, Bill. We don't know if it's true. Maybe you could confirm or deny that. That, that maybe your son that, might be the quarterback at St. Clair. No, no, he he he's playing wide out. Oh, wide out. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll be a wide receiver. He'll be there. Did I get that wrong, Fred? Well, that's what Brady thought he heard that, and I asked Bill before the show. And he, and he said, oh, yeah, okay, okay. I didn't want to spoil it. Well, Bill, you're a hell of a guy. We can't thank you for enough for coming on here because I don't know why anybody would come on the show. I really right. don't. <laughs> I really, and I'll be honest with you. I don't know why you had me, to be quite honest, but I do appreciate <laughs> no. it. I had a great time. I had a great time. Well, do you, well Bill – there's a lot of reasons we picked you on the show because, uh, you know, obviously we know how passionate you are about sports. You're passionate as much as we are. The, the question, uh, the elephant in the room had to be figured out about the shorts. Yeah. And I knew that you, you and your, uh, uh, your 
the sense of humor that you have where you pick up things and, and you say stuff, um, it always uh, makes everybody laugh too. So, I mean, that's cool. And, you know, I've known Chris for a long time, known you for a long time, and we, we've hung around quite a bit and it's, it's, it's always a pleasure to see and, and talk to you, dude. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me, fellas. I had a great time. Really yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming on. So before we you want to give the lineup? You want to do the yeah. lineup coming up? Yeah. So before we go, um, as Mike said at the beginning of the show, uh, don't forget to uh, visit uh, our YouTube uh, uh, channel and uh, subscribe. We're up to 72 subscribers now. Um, hey, thank you all, all you 72 that have joined in. Um, <laughs> you know, give us some thumbs up, you know, get, you know, click the bell so we can, uh, you know, you can be notified when we have a new show, you know, throw some comments in there, give us some topics. Also, we're on Facebook under the uh, idiot circle. Um, feel free to follow, you know, anything that uh, if you ever have questions, uh, you know, throw them out there. We'll uh, obviously try to get them on the show, but uh, uh, big, big news, big news. Um, you know, we have some, some lineup stuff that we're going through uh, again next week. Um, haven't, it's going to happen next week. We just don't know which day. Um, we're going to have Darren Letson, the head football coach from uh, Marine City, on, um, and we're really looking forward to that. I, you know, that's it's going to be fun. We're going to learn a, a little bit about him, and, and you know, from a from a outside of football perspective as well as you know what what he sees uh, coming up as far as the uh, upcoming season. Uh, the the ninth, we are going to have Craig Zimmerman and, and Jesse Laboon, our, our play by play and color. Um, uh, come on for Marine city football. Um, we were supposed to have Missy Fisher um, from the Marine city fish company, but she's not going to be able to do the show until, you know, mid to late September. So my, his, her, his, excuse me, her replacement is Mike Legro, head coach of Croslex high school. He'll, he'll be on, uh, on the 11th, uh, the 16th, we're going to have Jeff Bohm and Dave Vandenbosch coming on battling between each other because they're going to talk about the Battle of the Bands, which will be the 19th and 20th of August. Uh, the 17th, uh, I got Larry Rollins, head football coach from Port Huron Northern High School. He it will be on on the 17th. And then on the 24th, um, we have Brock Hanley, who's got his 10 topics that he pushed on the show. And we're going to have a little fun, and we're going to turn it into a little game show with him being the, you know, kind of the uh, show host. He's gonna be uh, he's gonna be like Wink Martindale. Oh throwing, wow! Throwing an old name out there. Yeah. Um, and just to let you know, we do have uh, some feelers out uh, to Derek uh, Meyer, from the head coach of Marysville, and I have uh, and also Dan Perkins, the head coach of uh, Port Huron High School. What about the guy from the Riviera? Uh, we're gonna do that in September. And what about the guys that are opening up gourds? September. Okay, because, September. Yes. You know, they they want to get their feet wet and get, get everything going. You know, they gotta they gotta kind of you know get their feet wet a little bit before they do their little. Bill, good. before we let you go, we did a polling study of our audience, and uh, it it went quick actually. It didn't take long. Um, Three. People. We found out that uh, uh, most of our listening audience, which was just one, but that's probably most, um, they listen to the show when they're on the pot when they're sitting there on the <laughs> and I think I heard that uh, we did that study to find that out. Um, I think that's my really intention awesome. was actually to do the show from that. But my wife wouldn't let me. Oh, oh my God. Man. If you would have done that, that would have been yeah. awesome. That would have been awesome. <laughs> oh, right. Most of the, most of those people are constipated. So when they heard your voice, uh, <laughs> uh, you really, uh, loosen, help. you really helped loosen something up there, tiger. Oof. Oof. All right, so we should we should end it on that note. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. Billy thanks, Nesbitt, again, Bill. thanks again. Thanks. Love you, brother. Love you, guys. Good, good Go Mariners. Go Mariners. Go Black. Go Black. <laughs>